I'm Paul Antonio, Master Scribe and Creative Director of Paul Antonio Scribe. I've been doing calligraphy for 25 years. My clients include Tiffany, Joe Malone, the BAFTA, British Museum. How to use calligraphy tools. We'll start off with the simplest tool, a pencil. So the pencil can be sharpened and we can use it on its point to make monoline letters or we can use it on its side to make interesting shaded letters. The next thing to go up to would be the double pencils, take two pencils. This is the best tool to start learning calligraphy because it gives you two lines which is the outline of a square edge pen and it's the principle on which it works. Most calligraphy is based on using the angle of the nib to a baseline and so we get this shape and then we line the points up and so this is the best way to start especially if you don't want to spend a lot of money markers with marker pens we use a large one we take an extra broad and we'll see it's the same principle as the double pencils don't press too hard and keep the pen at a reasonable angle. You can work vertically, but some pens have a truncated edge, so you do really want to glide on the edge of that truncated bit. Cartridge pens. These are fountain pens with cartridges in them. So this one has a, a cartridge and the nib is quite small. Next up. Choosing a dip pen, go to your local store, go to any store that has a set, and you choose the holder and the nib. So this is a square pen, hold the square pen at its, like this. Try not to hold the pens this way, otherwise you can cross the tines, the two sides of the nib, and damage them. Insert into the holder, like so until it doesn't really move that much. And then we use the reservoir. This assists with holding more ink on the pen. And you want to hold, put the reservoir just a little way back, about a millimeter, half a mil. Some nibs need curing before you can actually use it because all nibs have lacquer on them so they don't rust. So you might need to lick the nib gently and your saliva will help to take the lacquer off. Some people suggest you run it through a flame, but if you do this, you can actually damage the nib because they are very thin bits of metal and they lose the temper very easily. This is very important, especially if you're going to use a pointed nib. Removing the lacquer helps with the flow of the ink on the nib. And we'll also look at using a pointed nib. Again, with the pointed nib, hold it very carefully. This, these nibs are even more delicate than the square edge nibs. The thing about pointed nibs is you really need to hold the page at a slightly different angle so that the tines of the nib spread evenly. Next up, choosing the right ink. I've used manuscript fountain pen inks, but I'm also going to look at using the Winsor Newton calligraphy inks. These inks are slightly thicker and denser. Always have little rags around. They stop ink from getting everywhere. And they're quite good for resting things on. And as you can see, this, is, this ink is a lot thicker than the fountain pen inks, and they're also a lot denser. It is advisable to thin this down with a little bit of water, but not in the jar. So little jam jars, very important. Just use a little bit of water with your ink. Syringes filled with distilled water, very important, or you could actually get a drop. I'm going to look at how to use gouache. Now, I, I'm using my favorite paper, which is GF Smith Color Plan. Um, and these come in pads. But I'm going to use a dark color because I want to show you how to mix up a light ink. Take a little bit of zinc white. 
distilled water and you want this to be just about the consistency of single cream. So I'm mixing the color up. Candle holders, very useful for holding. I'm a dipper. Some people are brushers, meaning they will use the brush to put the ink onto the back side of the nib. But I generally prefer to dip my nibs. When you dip, there's no need to wipe it off. You just shake gently, the excess will come off. So this ink is a little bit on the thin side, as you can see, it's pulling together. So we might need to add a little bit of gum arabic, which helps to bind the ink together better. It also helps to, to fix the ink much better on the surface. Next up, choosing a quill. I'm not going to show you how to cut one. These are already cut. These are goose quills. These are cut in the same way that a nib looks. In fact, this is why a nib looks the way it looks, because of how a quill was cut. And I'm just going to dip. You can wipe off the excess from the top if you want, but I find this is usually quite helpful because it gives you a pool of ink to choose from. Now, unfortunately, a quill holds less ink than a metal nib with a reservoir, so you have to Keep dipping. And that's how to use calligraphy tools and materials.